Hey, Alba. <laughs> How, How are, are you, you today? I am in great form. I am about to go off and do an opera. You're a busy woman. We, we need well, to get you to do like a Patreon takeover where you do like photos from the shots of my yeah, life. That would be cool actually. Um, you too. I mean, it's just constant uh, busyness for the two of us, isn't it? Mm -hmm. But this is mad because it's about a hundred, it's a production of, of a full opera, full orchestra. Um, oh. And all socially distanced, so it's very cool. That is very um, cool. Yeah, so a, a lot of people. So I mean, if this works, it means we can kind of get back to big events, which would be very exciting. Wouldn't it? Man, I don't envy you leading the cellos for a socially distanced opera with you know all the time taking that happens, mm. and yeah. um, having to find that unity with like all the distance. But I'm sure you'll. Yeah. I'm sure it, you'll you know, be. Um, I, I think it'll be out. fine. I think the, it, it does mean that people have to have a little bit more personal responsibility. Yeah, it's true, you know? it's true, yeah. So sometimes that will combat the fact that we can't actually, you know, hear each other. Yeah. Talk to me, t talk to me next week when I finish it. There we go. Uh, so it's good we have a little bit, can I even say this, a little bit of a breather this week with Popper 34. <laughs> I mean, the first thing is it doesn't, it doesn't hurt your thumb to play this one, so that's a positive, right? Yes. And it's only like one that. page. Oh, and it's, it's really legato and delicious sounding. So it is. That's quite yeah. lovely, isn't it? It is. Good old double stops. Um, mm. Your favorite. And my fave, yeah. Uh, I have to say, like, it's both a blessing and a curse because I can, I'm sure it's the same for you, though, with this. You can kind of go on autopilot just playing through it if you're quite used to playing your double stops. And then it's actually not a very useful way to practice this at all. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Really, this is more about the connections and how to make double stops legato, right? Totally, yeah. I was thinking about uh, repertoire that this would actually help. Have you ever played the Shostakovich? It's four songs for piano, violin, voice and cello. I have not, no. One Sounds of my favourite Shostakovich pieces, actually. It's a beautiful okay. chamber music work, very powerful. But it has an entire, everyone has a, has a go on their own with the piano mm -hmm. or just with the singer. And there's one movement that's all double stops for cello. And I remember learning it in college. It was the first time I'd ever tried to, you know, have a legato connection between double stops. And this would have been very helpful to at least address some of yeah. those issues before something. And that, that one is, it's a lot trickier than these type of double stops. It's a very good introduction actually because yeah, there's a lot of rep where you'd have to do that. I mean I'm thinking Schumann Concerto Second Movement. I don't know if you've played um, Dvorak's Silent Woods. Yeah. Have it's you played that? The, 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 yeah it's beautiful but at least you know this is sort of a more accessible study I would say in terms of like where you could start working on this and you know when you're more used to playing double stops it's a great one to go back and really really hone in on all these you know, legato techniques. Also, yeah. Britain first solo sonata. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you remember when we were having to go at that a few years I ago? I do remember. The old do pizzicato remember. control with the um, double stops. Yeah. That's... Seriously. I even thought, in a totally different manner, you know, the Elgar. Oh, yeah. Da, 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 da. The idea of, you know, that elongating the quaver. Oh, yeah. Or I suppose we're not elongating it, but we're making it really fill the space of the, th yeah. the third quaver in order to yeah. make it sound more legato and this works similarly here it's a great um, point and if you can do it with double stops it's going to feel way easier on a you know single line exactly. melody. Yeah, so what point. are your like major top tips for legato in double stops tell me i'm very so curious. well for me it's definitely you have to be able to separate the left hand and the bow hand and be aware of the fact that the same bow speed and a really actually firm connection in the fingers as you change the bow because if it's too mm. loose it'll flop all over the place um so you really do have to control that level even more so than you would have to with just one solo line you can kind of get away with a bit more like that mm -hmm. um and then obviously the actual connection figuring out <laughs> Am I sliding up one string? 
what is the mm. connecting note? You don't always have to have two connecting because that's not always possible. But making sure you know what is the connecting. There's always some form of connection that you can make. And if you make those decisions at the very start, then I think this is all much, much easier, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. Those are great points and really different than things I've thought about. Oh, so um, tell me, what, what were you thinking? Well, so a major one that comes to mind for me, and this was a starker thing, but it's... I'm sure everyone thinks about this, but it's just with the string crossings, you know, in double stops, thinking about, um, this is the second bar, for example, um, the string that's in common and using that to create the legato. So you'd stay on that note to get that connection. Yeah. So, Absolutely. you know, Letting go, you, you don't always have to go two notes to two notes. Um, exactly. I find that's a really helpful concept for all sorts of things we play, like Bach and, and all, all that. Absolutely, that's a great, great point. Um, and to be aware of the fact that you can actually kind of sneak that in at the last second mm. when nobody else can hear it. So you don't have to yeah. actually go... Yeah. But just at the yeah. very last second, by just... You can see the bow has to level over. Just that last second can help that connection still sound legato, right? That bit too. That sounds so much like those two notes. It's so Schumann to me. I'm like, oh, those chords. Yeah. Um, you know, the old question of balancing the voices in these different chords. You know, I mean, there's a lot yeah. of that. That you know, I had I had more time, I probably would have broken this down and analyzed it more based on like harmonically. Yeah. You know, what's more important or more interesting. Um, yeah. But right now I have to say I'm kind of doing it more just based on my intuition. Um, yeah. But also I think another important thing about legato is like the, in terms of like the consistency of sound, is your bow placement on the string. So, you know, for example, just the, that, you know, distance you need to move closer to the bridge to get the evenness of sound. Yeah. And, there's a lot of moments like that where there's a sudden change and it, it can be, yeah. you know, really tricky thing to figure out because of, you know, an open string sticking out. That moment, that's actually a very tricky thing if you want to have complete control over the sound because you're on a diminuendo, on an up bow, you have yeah. this discrepancy between the higher, you know, getting that to speak and it's just a really complicated thing. You could spend a lot of time really... Yeah honing in on all those skills and you can also that one I was thinking about you can actually slide up with your first and then just let go at the moment you need mm -hmm. which does disguise it a bit more than so you have two options to shift really fast at the last second yeah or do a sneaky pretend note you'd have to time it quite well yeah yeah i should probably do three there but i'm not i'm doing a four because it's more consistent for me but... but in terms of legato it's much better to do three three i think so people. i'm actually anyway. using a, a baron writer fingering for this here oh right just to see and actually there are some it's just useful to see the two different ones isn't it it is, um, yes. And, I need and what's to... easier and what's not. And actually, whoever fingered the brown writer, when we eventually get that, I think they would tend to be a bit more along my line of fingering. Choices. Do you know, that's interesting you bring that up because, you know, I, I'm actually playing off the Baron writer edition that I need that's to cool. send to you. But um, the, uh, the suggestion for the, some of the pizzicatos is to use your thumb. Yeah, that is madness. I can't. I tried it yesterday and I actually got like a, like, I don't know, like a shock in my thumb. It was like, you don't move that way, you know, like yeah. when you overstretch a muscle or something. <laughs> well, funny you should say that because I just totally disregarded that. I mean, I did try it and was like, that is madness. That must be someone who has like a giant thumb or can actually stay like this and just, they have a mutant thumb. <laughs> I don't know. It's... Yeah. But it's some a, of them are very helpful, and some of them, I suppose, like the yeah. other edition, we just have to pick and choose what works for us. Yeah. It's useful, though, to have the, you know, different options, for sure. Yeah. Um, what, did, what did you think about any of the areas where you do have the, those bits 
left hand pit cadets. As far as the bow control, it's quite hard to re remain really yeah. constant with the bow while you're also, you need the weight balance over the fingers, but then you need to somehow not let that interfere. It's a lot of this, isn't it? I mean, <laughs> I think also, you know, to a even add to that, I mean, I, I think I could do with a lot more weeks of practice on getting those like really, really um, pianissimo diminuendos and stuff like that whilst doing the pits. But I think the other thing too is that um, you need to use so much more weight and emphasis to get the pizzicatos to speak evenly with the yeah. bowed thing. So that, I think that's probably what I found most challenging is keeping that lightness and that sense of fluidity in the bow while being really, with the, the finger that pizzicato is actually, being yeah. a little bit more firm with that. Um, that's probably what I found the trickiest, but. For me, I just thought what was very important was that I had a weight balance over. So even for the last two chords, or the last bar. So if you decide what your tuning is for the last two of those, so you have to really weight down across four strings, right? And get those in tune as well. It's tricky to actually get enough weight over each finger for it to be really truly in tune, isn't it? Yeah, and then it's so hard. I mean, I can't think of any... I mean, it's probably really useful to have that skill, but I can't think of any repertoire where you'd have to have that sort of hand position really firmly down. But, you know, for fast string... Actually, I mean, I guess there's a lot of stuff with fast string crossings where you'd really want to just be able to... and have, yeah. like, all of those notes available without having to do any rotation in the fingers and stuff yeah, but yeah I actually wrote, wrote I wrote some of this in my recent cello suite funnily enough oh did <laughs> so you I was thinking very handy practice <laughs> just following on from what you said about the bow and moving it further particularly when we go to um just the end the very end the last line <laughs> quite close to the bridge or else it sounds a tiny bit strangled doesn't it yeah yeah, yeah and to just point. remember to let it come out while you're actually can you vibrate and pits at the same time or yeah. can you for a split second stop pits and go you don't really need the pitting finger to stop rotation that doesn't have a, an yeah. effect on it. You just need to be able to do it in tempo. So that's, I definitely don't vibrate on all the chords when I'm getting quieter and quieter, because yeah. obviously that has more of an effect on the bow control and all of that. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. But good tip to practice, I suppose. Yeah, that um, triggered my memory to one other thing I wanted to mention, which is actually just the very opening. I think it's um, great practice, but it's quite difficult to find a double stop in piano from nowhere when, when you're I mean just to do it on its own is fine but to think about it in the context of the line I think is really challenging it's a great opportunity to practice like all this control and yeah. you know when you're Big time. nervous in a performance being able to reliably yeah. get both notes to speak I've, I've been thinking about that actually since we started this that quite often we'll say go and I'll start you know without yeah. thinking about how I'm going to start, where I'm going to start. So I might want to go, I don't want to start too close to the heel for that double stop. So maybe, you know, three, three inches in. Do I start from the string, from above the string? I have to make all those choices so that when we do the run through, I actually do those things. Yeah. Yeah, you know, it's, is um, it close it's a, to the bridge or not? Is it close to the fingerboard? So we'll get better yeah. by study 40, right? <laughs> yeah, totally. I mean, I think that um, you made such a good point, which is that, you know, we you really have to practice these things that happen, like, before you actually play. You know, when I sure. took a lot of orchestra auditions, I was thinking about that constantly because of the quick change you have to do when you play excerpts. But that preparation and that consciousness of like exactly all the control you want to have with your hands. I mean, 
you don't think about it when you're performing or you I don't think you should be preoccupied thinking about that but having built in that practice is really like the only way to make it reliable you know 100 percent reliable anyway or as Definitely. close to that as you can so absolutely yeah, yeah. super right Shall all right thanks hear it But yeah, I'm always when I get to that moment myself, like, wait, which one is it? I know. I should have pulled my hair back for that. It was like really bothering me. But oh, hey, no. lessons learned. Happens, right? It happens. Oh my god. Lesson with long hair. Definitely keep it away from cello ear or you will strangle I yourself. Know. <laughs> I know. Right, I had this time at IU. I was in the chamber orchestra and my hair got like all wrapped around my my peg. Oh, no. And I had a solo and I had to stand up at the end and it was stuck, so I had to be like <laughs> that's happened to me as well it has that has actually happened to me it's like the worst thing ever because you're like suddenly you're aware of the fact that you need to go and you keep doing this <laughs> you're stuck after it <laughs> and they're like come on come on stand up and you're like okay <laughs> I feel your pain oh my god the hilarity of performance I know um, I know I have a good one about the armed man I should tell you sometime funniest thing maybe i'll tell you now go on okay so on. the armed man solo you know the yeah big you know everyone's like oh beautiful cello solo but under pressure you know it's it's so oh yeah and you have to make it very exposed so i was playing this at, in a church somewhere had my phone on silent and i played the whole armed man solo went really well delighted myself literally i would say 20 seconds later, we just started the next, the final movement of the armed man and my phone was in my bag beside me and there was an alarm on my phone. Whatever had happened, there were 45 minutes of speeches before the concert 
and I hadn't turned off this alarm because I thought this no way it would still be going on and I just so the <laughs> person sitting beside me thought they were literally having a stroke and it was really loud so nobody could hear it but I had to do this and try to fumble <laughs> to find and I just thought if that had happened 20 seconds earlier it would have just completely destroyed the Iron Man solo very lucky very lovely. Oh, yeah. I was just thinking, this is such a nice, lush one to, like, ease you into oh. some la romantic la bohème. Oh. I know. So excited. What gorgeous tunes. So, uh, Great. I'll be all opera up by the next time I see you next week. Wonderful. Hopefully that will inform your totally non-operatic uh, <laughs> interpretation choices. of Popper 30. <laughs> anyway. This was really fun. I really enjoyed this. Yes. Yes, um, a little salve for our Friday, so. Yeah, uh, big time. So more of these, Popper. More of these. Yeah, absolutely. Right. Okay, I'll see you next time. Have a lovely week. Bye. Thanks. Bye.